and welcome to Finextra TV at EBA Day 2020. I'm Hannah Wallace and kindly calling in today is Andre Kasterman from Intix. So Andre, thank you very much for calling into our virtual studio. Welcome. Nice to be here. Hannah. Brilliant to have you. So I want to start off today's interview by looking at the sort of type of challenges banks are facing today around payment flows and friction. So my first question really is, what do banks need to consider given the rise of instant payments? Let's start there. Yeah, sure. We all witness a, a lot of innovations in payments, in the payments world, and particularly uh, with regards to instant payments, not only at domestic level, but also now more and more at cross-border level. And actually, this puts a huge pressure on banks, particularly on the operational side, because they have been used to handling payments in, in batches, in files, and now suddenly those payments have to go and be processed in a few seconds within their uh, existing infrastructure. So there are key, key challenges around that, in particular with also with regards to new uh, service levels with real-time payments indeed, and new client expectations around visibility. So it's not only the speed of processing, but the, the real-time access to the latest status of a particular uh, payment flow uh, or payment instructions. And that's where banks uh, need to consider indeed that uh, not only those payment instruments have evolved, but technology has evolved as well. And that's why they're coming to, to us at Intix to understand how they can actually take advantage of the latest technologies to address those challenges around monitoring those flows, tracking those uh, payments, and uh, providing the right uh, new services to their clients. Sure. All right. So, of course, there's a lot of talk, though, about the value of payments transaction data as well, isn't there? But do you think there might be an element of height here, or is there significant benefits to leveraging this data? What do you think? Yeah, there is much talk about data. Years ago, we were talking about big data and analytics. Now things have evolved beyond the analytical uh, side where we were used to analyze the data after processing. Now, technology allows indeed to handle this data in real time during processing. And that's where also banks realize that with those new data management technologies, so I would put data management as a, a separate type of technology from big data, we, we are actually able to tell them in real time uh, how many payments are being processed, how many, uh, what is the value of those payments, and most importantly for operations people, uh, understand what is the value at risk, the value of payment transactions that could be delayed or, or that are being put on hold for whatever reason. So being able actually to, to track and give real-time insights so that incidents can be handled proactively uh, and uh, full visibility is offered to those who have to deal with the, the operational uh, issues. So that's really where uh, also banks are, are coming to us because with, with those new technologies, data management technologies, they can uh, use that data to increase their operational excellence and to provide also more agility to their clients, being able to tell their clients, yes, indeed, we had an outage, uh, but here is the, the resolution a few uh, few hours down the road rather than a few days or weeks down the road. Sure. All right. So as you say, you position Intex as a data management product company. So what do you mean by data management when we hear so much about big data? And could you tell us a bit more about what makes you special in the way you handle transaction data? Yes, yeah, so, so definitely the, uh, the challenge for banks, and, and uh, this is because of the, the complexities of, of the payments world in terms of channels, formats, and clearing systems, but the challenge for banks, and the higher the bank, the, the, the bigger the bank, the higher the challenge is to basically get access to this data. It sounds strange to say so, but this is because those payment systems are, are not uh, harmonized necessarily within the bank, you know, further to mergers and acquisitions, a lot of legacy te technology still exist. Mm -hmm. A lot of systems are interconnected, payment flows are highly complex uh, within the banks. And this is where with a standardized data management technology as, as we offer at Index, we can provide them with a harmonized control tower 
like an, in an airport, you have one single control tower to look at all of those different um, activities. We're not, we're not looking at the planes, obviously, we're looking at payment flows, other than transactional flows, but you really can imagine having a, a control tower to look at all of those payment flows that the banks are, uh, that a, a particular bank is, is handling with recent technologies or, or more uh, uh, aging technologies. So Intix offers that single view on all those transactions, not only after processing, but most importantly during processing. Okay. And we do that with the latest data uh, technologies indeed that are meant to uh, process uh, high volumes of, of transaction because it's not just a payment that needs to be tracked but also all the events that are related to that transaction like the booking, the, the screening, the archiving and all of the uh, intermediary middleware products. So this whole control tower uh, we offer to banks is really providing an end-to-end uh, tracking of those transactions. And this is done using a standardized software solution that will actually behave in different ways depending on configuration that is then client specific. All right, that's interesting. Thank you for clearing up a few things there and a very good analogy. Uh, so my next question then is, what do financial institutions need to consider then when handling these large amounts of transactions and keeping up with the surging volume requirements, but also where does AI and blockchain fit in here? Yeah, I think that the common theme uh, across all of those uh, uh, elements here is uh, surging volumes of data. Uh, of course, we hear, hear from, uh, from the news, from the press, that more and more payments are going digital. So the, the number of, of digital transactions, particularly in the in the low value space, is, is is surging. But also all of the information around those those payments is uh, is increasing. You know, with longer remittance information to automate reconciliation and ISO 2022. But also all of the intermediary events are actually stored by banks, and this is information around the transaction. So the key message here is. Um, the, the the handling of all that information uh, in order to offer the, the appropriate analytics and to offer the end-to-end -end tracking cannot be just relying on traditional database technologies. You need technologies, and those are the technologies that Intix offers as part of its data management expertise, technologies that are really designed for uh, those huge data volumes. So this is not about relational databases as we were talking about 20 years ago, but this is about technologies enabling distributed architecture, high availability, redundancy and failover as an information system, not as a transaction management system. And indeed, once this data is accessible, the banks want to uh, feed uh, various value-added processes. For instance, this data can be accessible to their clients, not only to their operations teams, but to their clients via their website. So there's an, an integration there. This data can be feeding uh, an AI processing, you know, for compliance. Uh, and AI uh, without data doesn't mean much. AI really need data, transaction data, to perform the algorithm and, and provide additional insights. So, so Intix is there also to feed various uh, specific AI processes on compliance, on credit scoring. And then, then with blockchain, then uh, that is yet another source of externalizing the data uh, rather than sending over a traditional channel like uh, e-banking. In the future, the transactions could be evolving on, on the blockchain. But for, for the bank internally, they also have a life cycle within the back office. And this is where Intix is acting indeed as the control tower on those transactions, whether they end up on e-banking, Swift, or, or blockchain, you need to handle them in the back office, and this is where we are we are positioned. All right. Well, finally, then, what's your position with regards to innovations in domestic and cross-border payments, such as Swift GPI, Mastercard, Visa, and Ripple, perhaps? 
Yeah, it's a, it's an amazing space, cross-border payments. Everyone is talking about it uh, over the last uh, uh, four, four or five years, certainly with Swift GPI, and but also with uh, card companies, MasterCard, Visa, you mentioned them, or blockchain companies, Ripple, uh, getting into the market, addressing the need for cross-border real-time payments. So banks will have a lot of options, and clients will have a lot of options to handle all of those new types of of uh, of transactions and but for intix it's actually as we are uh, addressing the needs in in the back office within the bank uh, we see all of those channels in an agnostic way uh, whether the bank decides to use an additional channel or not or to stick to to, to swift messaging which is the traditional one uh, whether they move uh, from mt to iso or start uh, creating uh, additional formats or variations of ISO for their country or community. For, for Intix, all of that is configuration. And uh, we continue to act uh, as a control tower across those channels, those formats, those instruments, and very welcome indeed to assist the bank in implementing all of those channels. And recently, indeed, we had a one uh, the Nordic bank uh, asking us to uh, embed P27, which is based on MasterCard. And that shows that whereas uh, an Intix implementation would start on the on a particular type of payment, like cross-border payments in the traditional way, uh, where we can integrate GPI, we, we, we definitely also uh, quickly uh, extend to new initiatives like P27. Brilliant. Well, Andre, you've certainly painted the picture for us there. Um, thank you so much for calling in and sharing your insights. It's been really informative, uh, but we'll leave it there for now. So thank you for joining us and enjoy the rest of EBA Day. Thank you, Hannah. See you later. Bye-bye.